first time on the Metal Voice. Thank you for having me. Lucifer, what, uh, founder? You're more than just a singer, right? I mean. Hello. Have you yeah. done your homework? <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, that, that's a question. Well, I mean, I mean, you're not the founder of Lucifer, but you're the founder of the Lucifer Band. Well, that's true. Yes, uh, I'm the founder of the Lucifer Band. I'm... I sing, I write, I produce, I do many things. I'm the band secretary, and um, the list goes on. Okay, all right. Tour so, manager, roadie. Oh. <laughs> all that as well. I've done all these jobs, believe me. <laughs> all right. Uh, Joanna, do you, do you go by your maiden name, or do you go by uh, Sardonis, or do you go by Plato Anderson? Um, well, I'm Plato is actually my maiden name. Um, okay. Yeah, and I'm married to Nicke, so now my name is uh, Plato Anderson. Okay. Um, but I know it's complicated. Call me Johanna from Lucifer. <laughs> That's probably the easiest. No, <laughs> will do. Sadonis is that's a German name or Greek name? Um, it's actually a Lithuanian name. I was Lithuanian married. Lithuanian name. Before. Yeah. Um, okay. I was married to an American um, with Lithuanian roots when I was very young and stupid. It was not a good decision, but I guess it no. should happen. <laughs> yeah. All right. So here it is. The, the new, uh, new album. album. Yes. Lucifer 5. Out January 26 on Nuclear Blast Records. Of course, uh, this is, I guess the first question is, what have you done different on Lucifer 5 that you didn't do on Lucifer 4? Not much. Um, it was um, <laughs> um, as always. You know, we put uh, all of our heart and energy and love and passion into it. Uh, we produced and recorded it in our own studio, which is just outside this window. And um, the only difference is that um, we didn't have time to mix it ourselves this time. So uh, one of, of Nick's best friends, Robert mm -hmm. Persha. Mm -hmm. He um, mixed the album and he did a really good job. He, it's actually, it, it was so good that uh, Nicke, who mixed the album before, said, I'm not sure if I can mix any album ever again. <laughs> because, um, yeah, but that's a good thing. So uh, he hit with, his peak. He's hit, the he, bar he hit is his high, peak, right? The bar is <laughs> high, yes. Yeah, Robert definitely lifted that bar, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. I yeah, I mean, we've been, listening, we've been listening to it. I mean, we've been following Lucifer for a couple of years now. And, and this album, I mean, it hits all marks. Uh, every song, it's it's like a new album, 80s band that has sex with the ghost. That's what I said. <laughs> I don't think she would say that, though. <laughs> you know, I, I, or, maybe, or maybe ghost is, is influenced by Lucifer. Exactly. You never know, right? <laughs> well. Yeah. You know, Ghost was there first, I guess. But it is funny. You mentioned Ghost. We have been on tour together. Uh, this past November, we supported Ghost on a French arena tour, which was very interesting. Um, and I've seen Ghost grow, you know, um, because I used to put on shows in Berlin. I was a small local heavy metal promoter. Uh, I used to run a club night called Kill em All Club, you know, dedicated to old school heavy metal and hot rock and uh, I would put on bands and I put on Ghost in I think it was 2011 before the first album came out and they played in front of I don't know 80 people there or something so we wow. go yeah mm -hmm. they go way back. Amazing. like did they have the masks back on or they're just playing as a band um no no they were masked um they already had you know the the church robes going um uh, maybe they didn't couldn't afford the leather gloves, so they had these like black um, silicone gloves. I remember, <laughs> and but yeah, they had the the stick was there absolutely. Did, did you? And just I'm just curious. Did you think they were going to be as big as they are back then today? No, but I didn't really think about it. The thing is, I have seen another band grow like this. Um, I grew up with the guys for, from Rammstein mm. um, because I come from East Berlin. Oh, and cool. Yes, and I have a brother who's 11 years older than me. He was a GDR punk, and it was a very small punk scene in the GDR because it was, of course, a problem with the GDR government, you know, um, politically. But uh, Rammstein um, also came from that same punk scene. So my brother was really close friends with uh, Flake and uh, Powell from uh, Rammstein. So I know Flake, the keyboard player, since I was like three years old or something. Wow. Uh, yeah. Wow. 
And my brother would have to drag me along, you know, and uh, have, when he would hang out with his friends, my mom would say, you have to, you know, watch your little sister. So I'd be scared of Flake because he would like look down at me, you know, he was very tall. What are flat. you doing? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I've seen a band rise from being, you know, Did playing. You think, okay, okay. Did you think they would become as big as they are? No. But, you know, you don't consciously think about it. It just happens. And then you're like, wow, this is pretty cool you know and now the same thing happens with ghost it's amazing um I, it makes me really happy because um it is possible you know <laughs> i guess <laughs> I, I guess somebody's asking them the question did you think lucifer would become who they are today you know like a ah, lucifer is still nobody obviously oh, I wouldn't say like that. A, well we are a very small band we are a niche band and i'm aware of it but um i think uh, one of the reasons is also because i don't want to um, I don't want to change our sound. And um, of course, I could go to, you know, invest and, and um, get a really fancy modern producer to give us this like sleek modern rock sound that all the bands have. Um, we could do that, you know, and maybe it would make us more radio friendly or something. We could write the songs to be more um, accessible for the mainstream, but we don't want to because we like what we do. And um Maybe this means we are doomed to remain, you know, in the underground. But what I can say is that um, we have a very um, loyal following. And um, so far, um, the band is growing. It's growing slow, but steady and um, from album to album. So the curve never goes down. We always sell every album a little bit more records than on the last one. And I see it, you know, when we tour uh, the audience grow, you know, and we have fans that really um, are like true fans. They don't um, fuck off again. It's not like a hype thing that that happens quick and then it vanishes. Um, I think um, um, it gives me the feeling that Lucifer might be here to stay, which I'm hoping, of course, because I love what I'm doing. Would you like to obtain the level of success of a ghost or a Rammstein? Well, I mean, who would say no to that? You know, of course. <laughs> I'd Come on, Alan. You know, <laughs> There's a downside too, right? There's a downside. No, I, I really love, you know, like doing everything and to be really close to burnout before a tour because I have to, you know, do 10 jobs at the same time and be like terribly underpaid. I really love that. Let's let's keep it this way. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I mean, of course, you know, I, I would love to have people around me that do all these things so that I could really just focus on the creative process and on playing the best show that I can. I would love that. Yeah. Sometimes I, I, I wonder I, I, how I, I got, play. I, I got, I got to say, you know, the, you, I think everything you're, you were in Montreal. I think it was almost sold out the show, right? You played North America just now. We're in Montreal. Oh, yeah, you just right. played here. It was, mm -hmm. it was like a lot of, there's a lot of buzz on the band and you do have a hard, hardcore following, which is amazing. And that's how bands used to do it, right? That's how bands used to become very successful over time, tour, you know? Tour, tour, tour. Tour, 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 and great music. And I think this new album is like incredible. I think it's, it, you got the right, you hit the right marks, you know, and uh, it, and over time, people will even love it even more, I think, you know, and Thank go, you. you, go stripped you off. Think of it that way. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say it. I'll just say it. Okay. I'll say I think, it. Uh, it makes me happy when I, yeah. you know, because I have a lot of friends who play in bands. I mean, most of my, friends are musicians um and when they are successful uh, uh, it really means the world to me i'm not competitive uh, at all like that it's the opposite if if they do good i know this is good for music because the people that are my friends um they have the same usually the same kind of influences so if if they manage to be successful um with this, instead of this horrible modern rock crap, the generic shit that's on the radio often, um, that gives me hope, you know, for, for my band. Because we try to stay true to our, you know, ideals of hard I, I, I'm just kidding. I love Rammstein and I love Ghost. So I, those are two bands. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just joking I, around. I'm just joking. Oh no, I I have a sense for humor. Believe okay. me, but I just want to want to say, you know, that I think it's awesome when it works. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's a lot of female fronted bands now. I mean, uh, again, this this morning, uh, all these new releases. There's four or five female fronted bands. When you started, or or what were some of your role models when you were growing up and and getting into music? Um, so hard rock, 
and Metal stole me away around the age of 12 or 13. Before that, it was Madonna. <laughs> and, I <laughs> yeah. think, and I think what um, sold me to her so much was that she was so provocative and mm -hmm. um um, she had so many, she was so interesting to me because she um, did a lot of things um, that f even for like a mainstream artist are very like, oh my God, you know, um, and that somehow I always found appealing, um, the outsider. And um, mm, while my mom, you know, they, my parents listened to a lot of, um, they were big Stones fans and there was a lot of classic rock stuff like you know deep purple and zz top and stuff at home but also you know uh, the velvet underground and roxy music and and that type of stuff but um i think blondie and patty smith uh that's an early memory um my mom gave me a rock and roll compilation cassette when i was six and it had like all these like classic 50s things on it like chuck berry and jerry lee lewis and stuff and my favorite song on that was the Shangri-Las leader of the pack. Yeah. Um, and I think there that was also, you know, an early sign for my affinity to uh, tragedy. <laughs> because of course the song starts with a car crash, right? And I love those voices and um, yeah. Um, and, you know, and then later as a teenager, you know, I loved like Susie and the Banshees. Um, like if we speak about metal singers, uh, about female singers, I mean, um, in metal, there is not too many females that are like, I like girl school a lot uh, and the runaways. I like the kind of like the, um, you know, the, t the tough, um, unkitch kind of, uh, females. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. yeah, that's my cup of tea. Yeah. Um, and of course, um, I love Stevie Nicks and I love, you know, 70s Heart and Wilson is... Um, of course, of course, of course, absolutely. That's maybe obvious. You're in East Berlin, right? And I'm assuming you were sort of born with the transition period, right? Between when it, when it, when it became Western, I guess, right? East Berlin. Even, be, even before, I'm born in 79. And okay. so I actually, um, until I was six, we lived in East Berlin. But my parents were political enemies to the GDR government. So we applied uh, to leave and the communists were very happy to uh, get rid of us. Uh, so we were able, um, after one year uh, of application, to leave from East Berlin to West Berlin. Yeah. So, um, and these are all very vivid memories to me. So I was actually able to cross the border. My parents would bring me during summer holidays to the border uh, in Berlin. And on the other side, my my biological dad or my grandmother would pick me up. So I'd spend my school holidays in the GDR again, you know. So this, I feel like a dinosaur that, you know, I still um, have this in front of my, you know, mental eye, how it was with the wall and um, what it meant, you know, and how different Berlin looked on this side and that side. These are these are important memories, you know. These are important yeah. memories you have. Uh, you know, a lot of people can't say that. You know, who lived on both sides. You know, um, mm -hmm. what about if you want to describe the musical direction of this album compared to? I, I mean, you said it's kind of like the same old, same old. But what, how would you describe this album as different the, musically? Uh, I would say it has all the ingredients that a Lucifer album has always had. Hard rock, a little bit of new wave and British heavy metal from the 80s, 70s, heavy rock. You know, you have doom in there. Um, you have some sort of uh, pop sensibility, but more in an old school sense as in very subtle. But we do listen to a lot of 60s soul music as well. And all these things, you know, flow into us and get sped out uh, into um, a Lucifer album. I think on this album... Um, we took these typical Lucifer ingredients a little further and expanded a little bit. So um, you still have the doom and the heaviness and so on, but you also have, you know, with slow dance on a crypt, you have a song that's maybe even more so vulnerable and balladesque than we've ever gone that far in this direction. But then also, you know, with like immaculate heart, you have a um, um, a very classic rock song that's almost radio friendly or mainstream accessible it has that pop sensibility and it's not very heavy anymore uh but um it's not calculated i think we still remain truthful to 
our path and to our, you know, to what we're trying to do with Lucifer. Um, I also think that um, we say true to ourselves, but the goal is always to not repeat a song that we've done already. So hopefully we manage to keep the melodies interesting and new. Okay. Yeah, I mean, a, a slow dance in a crip, it's got even a bit of a bluesy feel on that one. Uh, that's a really a big change, I think. And it's one of the standouts on the album, as far as I'm concerned. So. Thank you. I was, I was wondering, you know, like bands like Rotting Christ, and Lucifer, how many problems have you had with promoters or people or church groups? Do you get a lot of you got to feed? Do you get a lot of pushback from those people? Um, it's funny that is a very American uh, or North American. I know you're Canadian, but it's a um, it's more of an American problem. Let's say it like this, because in um, we live in Sweden, um, where everything is very progressive in terms of uh, what role the church plays uh, versus the government, and. Um, Nobody raises an eyebrow at this name in Germany or Sweden at all. It's not associated with the plague as much <laughs> as it is in the States. Sometimes it's like um, I've seen comments, uh, and that's only always Americans, that say oh, this band would be way more successful if their name wasn't Lucifer uh, in America. And I see people, you know, sometimes somebody posts a Lucifer song into like... Um, I don't know, the fan group of some 70s hard rock band to show their friends and everybody's like in their 50s, you know, and then you have the ones from the Bible Belt that are like, oh my God, I can't listen to that with that name. So they don't even give it the, you know, the time of the day because of the name. Um, but I have thought about it, you know, am I willing to compromise and change that name because of that? No, I'm just going to keep on going, you know? So I think... Because I know that Lucifer... Have you got any threats from the Bible Belt cities? No, nothing happened so far. Um, not that I know of. I mean, sometimes I do think about it, you know, because the last album cover had me, um, you know, um, on the cross, like Jesus yeah, Christ. That's, that's pretty, uh, yeah, that was, oh. that was a nice picture, but it was, it could be... Inter then again, there was thousands of people who were crucified, so you, it doesn't mean anything, really. It doesn't mean anything, and, you know, it was also taking a little bit um, uh, a twist on the witch on the stake, which used to be tied to a cross too in Europe, you know, that's what they did to women back then. And, um, but my mom, <laughs> I haven't heard anybody say anything about this, except for my mother, when <laughs> she visited us in Sweden. And I said, um, yeah, this is, by the way, this is going to be the new, that's the photo for the album cover. And the re reaction from my mom, who's very okay. like, going. <laughs> Uh, and who grew up to be a Rolling Stones girl and stuff. She's like, oh, my God, somebody's going to kill you for this. Somebody's going to shoot you when you're on stage. So I'm like, oh, great. Great. Thank you for putting that into my head. Because yeah. now I always have that a little bit that we play. When we play that, um, I mean, it's not that I think about it all the time. But sometimes I catch myself having the thought, damn, you're really vulnerable on stage. If somebody wanted to do something, they could, you know. But um, people have been killed for a lot less than that. Seems, you know what yeah, I mean? It's not, it's not as bad I'm not as trying to scare is. you, but I'm hey, just trying to. But you know, um, you know how it is. People maybe won't have the idea if we don't over talk. Yeah, I, I think we should. <laughs> you know what I mean? Maybe yeah. we're like spawning interest in but, this now. <laughs> but, but, but you know what's interesting? You know what's interesting? It's the, the album cover of Luc yeah. Lucifer 5, Lucifer 5. I, I, it's sort of like that Black Sabbath greatest hits. You know, you open it up in the coffin of the lady. I thought it was really cool. Oh, yeah. I, good. Okay. Spoiler so, alert. Spoiler alert. Actually, <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Classy. Here I mean, they I, are. Yeah. So it is worth it buying an actual physical copy of an album because look how wonderful it is. I, I didn't know that was a coffin. I didn't realize it. I, got th I thought it was a picture yeah. at first, you know, like no, on a house. Um, yeah, but it, uh, the coffin has no silver lining. Me. That was actually also me in the coffin in the gar in our garden. We had um this beautiful old transport coffin that's uh, wow. over a hundred years old, and <laughs> that I borrowed from a friend, um, and that we carried into the studio and uh, with <laughs> photos. You know, it was a huge, very heavy metal coffin, and now all the journalists are asking me why are you standing in the doorway, and I was like. 
all this work for people to think, you know, I'm just like, hey, you know, in a door frame. <laughs> <laughs> You know, the Fallen Angel is a great lead-off single. It's, and I love that this album. The songs are short, right? You get to the point. It's uh, it's enjoyable. And like you said, it's going to all be played on the radio as for every song as far as I'm concerned. I totally agree. I think they should play Lucifer more on the radio. <laughs> yeah, but I think, you know, <laughs> the problem is, I mean, that would be awesome. Uh, of course, um, just because it would uh, enable us to continue doing what we love, you know um because it is hard sometimes um but uh probably one of the things that will hold us back from that is the name and the image and so on but i am not gonna compromise it that's okay that's i was like i mean what kind of trademark do you get for lucifer i mean you would think it would be already taken right like when, when you register lucifer like you think lucifer would have lucifer yes well nobody for some reason <laughs> it's so crazy like the most the most predictable thing wasn't sort of like you know uh i think the real lucifer really wanted me to have it or that or that, <laughs> or or that. that. it's either or it's either or. <laughs> <laughs> but i mean you know i've always been a fan of alice cooper and his, his sense of humor in the band and you know you listen to, like you know slow dance in a crypt Nothing but left to lose but my life. I mean, these are great titles. At the Mortuary, I think that, that's, for me, that's my favorite track on the album. So uh, I'm, I'm glad that we can have a little smile while we're listening to these songs as well. Thank you. Actually, At the Mortuary is also my favorite song, and it almost did not make it onto the album. Oh, my gosh, yeah. Yeah, because been... um, the arrangement was a little bit different on the demo, and um, Nika kept saying to me, we can't put this on the album. Uh, that's too weird. And I'm like, what are you talking about? This is the I swear, this is going to be a single. This is the best song we've had. And <laughs> um, and we we sat down and uh, rearranged it and recorded it. And I knew it. I, I just made it a single. I dictated that. <laughs> and that's um, what you got to do. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Stick to your guns. It is actually really my the favorite song of my whole Lucifer catalog is that oh, song. Wow. It, it combines so many elements that um, that we have in Lucifer. You know, you have the kind of upbeat, hopeful, very driven melody. Um, and then you have the very like gloomy, heavy doom parts. You know, there's a little bit of everything in there and the spooky bits. Yeah. And I really you know. You know what? I, I think, Alan, you touched on something here. Um, you know what? It's great about this album, even though your name is very satanic, like Lucifer, right? the songs aren't really that satanic. They're more like a spooky and they're more like gloom, doomy. You know, there's no real, like, you're not, you're not, you know, drinking blood of, you know, a goat or something, you know, that it's a very what nuanced, it's nuanced. Oh, yes, of, course. It of course. My, my cup of blood that I drink. Yes, of goat blood. Yes. <laughs> I, but I'm just trying to say that it's, it's still very tasteful. Like there, it's doomy. It's not, it's, it's not overdone, you know, like, um, that's what I'm trying to say. It, it's it, it borderlines doomy and dark, and and you know what? If you didn't have the name Lucifer, nobody would even know that it was a sort of satanic-ish type of band, right? But it's not. Right. But you know, if you look at bands like Blue Oyster Cult or yes. uh, Black Sabbath, you know, I mean, the first if you wouldn't, I mean, obviously, <laughs> we know Black Sabbath inside out, but. Um, no, Blue Oyster Cult's a perfect example. It's doomy. Yeah. It's 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 got a groove. It's 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 uh, it, it has that that element. Yes. But they also have that name, you know, yes. just like like Sabbath. They have those names that first um, initiate a different thought, and and they have that image, and they have symbols that they use they use, and they do have the dabbling in the occult as well. And mm -hmm. um, I think Black Sabbath and uh, Blue Oyster Cult are the two main pillars pillars as an influence on Lucifer and that's of course also a little bit the blueprint where I took this the idea was always you know you, as a framework you have the name and you use the figures and the the you know the images and stuff um, but it's it will be a band that will also have stuff in major in it you know besides the doom and all because the life uh, life is also not only death you know you have ups and downs and you want to keep That's it interesting right and you want to tell a story that um that one can relate to you know and um we you want find you want to find comfort in a song but you also want to have a good time and rock out you know and just you know enjoy um 
So I think it's important to feed all these different uh, yeah. desires. Hmm? I think you nailed it. And you know what? It's got, you're sort of unique and you've taken all these elements and you've kind of created your own unique style. It's good. It's really good. Thank you very yeah, talk much. To you about, talking about rocking out, you got the Satanic Panic Tour in 2024 in Europe. You want to talk a bit about that? Oh, yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's starting in um, in a few weeks. And um, we do some of the dates with Angel Witch, which is one of my favorite new wave of British heavy metal bands. Yeah, me too. Um, yeah. Great band. Really cool. So I'm very excited uh, to play with them. I wish they could have made the whole tour, but they couldn't. They are a little bit restricted to a few countries uh, for uh, reasons I can't reveal. <laughs> but uh, so, so we, you know, um, the other leg of the tour will be um, with two German bands, uh, Attic and The Night Eternal, which um, is probably something good for me to do for the German scene because, you know, I, I removed myself from Germany. I'm living in Sweden and uh, Lucifer is very much a Swedish band. And so maybe it's good to have a little bit of a uh, reunion with my country, you know, and go on tour with mm -hmm. two German bands for a change, which I've never done before, actually. Uh, so I'm excited about that. But um, that's not going to um, be the only dates. We are actually right now already planning more European dates for later in the year and UK dates and all that. So there's a lot of stuff in the works because we weren't able to tour, you know, with uh, the last two albums either. Lucifer 3 and 4 were both pandemic albums. Mm -hmm. So we have lots to, um, lots to play. That's all right, show the moment. album one last time. Show your album there one last time, The Coffin. Out on the 26th of January. 26th of January, yeah. Lucifer. It's a coffin, for God's sakes. It's not a doorway, okay? <laughs> Hold it's a coffin. I, it's a coffin. Yeah. It's a coffin. Absolutely. It's true. <laughs> yeah. okay. okay. All right. I appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Uh, it was wonderful Thank talking you. to you and a good luck. And everybody yeah. go get the album. It's really, really worth it. Yeah, it's really good. All the success that uh, comes along with it. I want to wish you and a happy new year if we didn't say so earlier. So. Thank you so much. I love the Merciful Fate shirt. Also great band. And I hope we come back to Montreal uh, very okay. soon. And thank you for having me. Great. Have a nice day. Have a nice okay. day.